So now we're going to start making the head. You're going to use whatever color you want for the main color of your dog. I'm going to be using my carrot colored yarn. We're going to start with a magic circle. Just take and drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. I'm using my four millimeter crochet hook. You're going to bring up a loop and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and then go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and your thumb, just hold the base of the six single crochet. You have those two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. Again, if it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Just gently close it and then take that loose yarn in and pull on that. Then you're going to turn your work to work into the first stitch and you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around. So two single crochet into the same stitch and you're going to repeat that for every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches and then come back. So now you can take and close the center of the magic circle and we're going to start making our increase rounds which means we're going to increase the number of stitches in the round and since this is the head it's going to be fairly large so we're going to be increasing all the way to one single crochet into 10 stitches and then two single crochet into the 11th stitch so I'm going to do the first couple of them with you for the first one you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. You should have finished with 18 stitches in the round and then you just take and move up the yarn marker. And for the next increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the next two stitches. and then two single crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. You should have finished 24 stitches on that last round and then for your next increase round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So you can see the pattern. We just finished the one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. And then that gave you a stitch count of 30. Now we're going to the next number, which would be four. One single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around. Okay, so this is the last one that I'll show you because you should have the pattern down now. You're just going to keep increasing consecutively, meaning that you started with one, then two, then three, then four, then now you're on one single crochet into five stitches, and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch. And if you notice that the pattern with the stitch count, it should increase by six stitches after each round. And we're going to continue increasing until we get to one single crochet into ten stitches, and then two single crochet into the eleventh stitch. And again we're working on the head. Now with the body you're going to be increasing the same way. So you'll start with one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, then eight, then nine, then ten, then eleven, and then you're going to stop on twelve. So for the body you're going to increase to one single crochet into twelve stitches and then two single crochet into the thirteenth stitch. 
And then again, the stitch count is easy because each round increases by six stitches. So now back to the head. I'm on one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet in the sixth stitch. And again, you're going to keep increasing and then stop for the head when you get to one single crochet into 10 stitches and then two single crochet into the 11th stitch. Now for this round, the five stitches, you're going to end up with 42 stitches in the round. And then again, each consecutive round will increase by six stitches. So here you can see I finished the head, increasing the number that I needed for the head. So I stopped on the round with one single crochet into 10 stitches and then two single crochet into the 11th stitch and this is what my work looks like. So this one has a total of 72 stitches and then for the body you're going to make it the exact same way except a little bit larger so you make two additional increase rounds. So again the head you stopped on 10 so you would make the one single crochet into 11 stitches and then the next round one single crochet into 12 stitches and then two single crochet into the 13th stitch. And then for the body I finished with 84 stitches total. So now for the head you're just going to take and move the yarn marker up and now you are no longer going to be increasing the number of stitches in the round. So you're going to maintain the same number of stitches each time you pass the yarn marker and you're not going to remove the yarn marker you're going to leave it in place so you can see how many rounds that you've completed so you just make one single crochet into every stitch around and you're going to continue this until you've completed 30 rounds so 30 rounds of just one single crochet into every stitch around. And when you reach the yarn marker, you're just going to leave the yarn marker in place and continue your working your stitches. And then every time you cross the yarn marker, you should still have the same number of stitches, which was 72 for the round. So if you're increasing the number of stitches or decreasing the number of stitches, then you're doing something wrong. So one single crochet in every stitch around for 30 rounds. And for the body, you're going to be doing the exact same thing, except you're going to be making 52 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. And again, for the body, I finished with 84 stitches in the round. So 84 stitches in the round, one single crochet in every stitch around, and again the body is going to have 52 rounds, so the body is going to be longer. For the head you stopped after 30, so only 30 rounds for the head. So I just finished one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 30 rounds. Now you're going to set the head aside because you're going to work on the pieces that go on the face. You're going to make two of these. This is the white triangle for the eye. The first thing you're going to do is just fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your 4 millimeter crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. And then just cinch the loop around the hook. And then we're going to make a chain. I'm going to just show you four of them. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one chain. two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 15 and then come back. After you finish your chain of 15, 
You're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So just take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, then you're just going to make a single crochet in every stitch back across and that will give you a stitch count of 14 for the row. So I know we started with 15 but because you made the single crochet into the second chain from the hook that's going to give you a stitch count now of 14. So go ahead finish making one single crochet in every stitch back across. Now you're going to take and make a chain one. So yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your chain one. Turn your work and then you're going to go into the next stitch over. So go into that next stitch over. So that chain one counts as your first stitch. You're going to go into that next stitch and make a single crochet, so that will be your second, and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across, and that should still leave you with a stitch count of 14 for this row. And then come back. Now we're going to make one more row of a stitch count of 14, so go ahead and take and chain one, then turn your work and again you're going to go into the next stitch and make your single crochet. And then when you're finished with this row you're going to end up with a stitch count of 14 again. So now after you finish that row you're not going to make a chain one. So you're just going to turn your work and then you're going to go into the next stitch for your first single crochet. That counts as one. And when you finish your one single crochet in every stitch across, because you didn't chain one and turn, you're going to have one less stitch for this row. So when you're finished with this row, you should have a total stitch count of 13. Then, again, at the end, you're just going to turn your work. You're not going to chain one. You're going to go into that next stitch for your first single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across. And this time, you're going to have a stitch count of 12. And you're just going to keep repeating this until you get all the way down to a stitch count of four. So you just keep turning and making one single crochet in every stitch and then you should have a consecutive countdown for your numbers, meaning that your next one will be 11 and then 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 and then all the way down to four and then come back. So you can see how you form a nice triangle on both sides. And now I just finished my stitch count of five. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my work. I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch for one single crochet, next stitch for two single crochet, next stitch for three single crochet, and then I'm going to slip stitch into that fourth stitch. So go into that last stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew it onto your dog. You're going to need two of these. So go ahead and make two of these tri white triangles. After you finish the two white triangles for the eyes, we're going to make the portion that goes behind your craft eyes or doll eyes. I just wanted to show you that my black Siberian Husky has the black nose so I made the black, I'm just going to call it the eyeliner 
around the safety eyes. Because of the coloring that I chose for the dog on video tutorial, I'm using the brown or golden honey colored nose. So the eye will be made, the eyeliner will be made with the same colored yarn as the nose. Whatever husky that you're making, you would just choose whatever yarn color that you want to go behind the eyes for the eyeliner. I used my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook for the eyeliner portion and I'm using the same colored yarn that I did for the nose. The first thing you're going to do is just take and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. And then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch the yarn down around your crochet hook and then we're going to make a chain. You're going to go ahead and make a chain of eight. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a single crochet. Then you're going to make a half double crochet, so just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. Now you have three loops on the hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a half double crochet. Then you're going to make a double crochet, yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through only two of the loops. You have two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through those two remaining loops. Then you're going to make a half double crochet, so yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three. Then you're going to make a single crochet. So now you're going to leave those last two stitches unworked. You're going to turn your work over. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch. and then you're going to repeat the same pattern across on the opposite side. So half double crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. And then a half double crochet into the next stitch. and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew this eyeliner onto the dog. And then you're going to need two of these. You make them the exact same way. After you finish making both of them, go ahead and set them aside and now we're going to make the pipsqueak portion. Now with my pipsqueak yarn, I'm using my 9mm crochet hook. So you're going to take your pipsqueak yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook and again I'm using my 9mm crochet hook. Hold the middle, hold the bottom of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch down that knot. And then just make sure the loop is around the crochet hook and not too tight. Then we're going to make a chain. We're going to start with a chain of 18. I'm just going to show a few of them with you. 
So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one. Go ahead and lift the loop a little bit because you don't want to make it too tight. There's two. Three. Four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 18, and then come back. Now, after you finish your chain of 18, then you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. And this is the part where people have difficulty with this yarn because you can't really see the opening, but you can feel it. So you can feel the second chain from the hook. Take your crochet hook, go into that loop, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and you're just going to go across into each stitch and make one single crochet in each stitch back across. You can see how your 9 millimeter crochet hook makes it much easier to work with. And that's all you do. You just make one single crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. So I'll work a few with you so you can see that it's really not that difficult. I'm not going to make it real difficult when we're using this yarn. I'm just using it to help create a fuzzy soft look for your dog. So I'm just going to keep it real simple and I love it with my 9 millimeter because then there's no real difficulty finding the opening to make your single crochet. And it's that easy. And then people will be amazed that you're able to use the pipsqueak yarn for your dog. So go ahead, finish making the single cro crochet in every stitch back across, and then come back. For those that still don't want to use the pipsqueak yarn and you just want to know my measurements, you can. Um, this is an inch square, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So about close to eight inches across. So then, when you reach the end, go ahead and chain one. And then turn your work. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make your single crochet. So you should still have 17 stitches, so try to count as you go. So here is 3, 4, 5. I'm just working it with you because first time working with this type of yarn because you're essentially you can't see the stitches which makes it a little bit difficult but because we're using the larger crochet hook you can kind of feel the opening as you go into it. So go ahead count your stitches as you go so you can kind of keep an idea of how many stitches that you have when you finish and then when you reach the end come back Okay, so I finished with exactly 17 stitches again. Then I'm going to make one more single crochet into the same stitch. So go into that whoop, go into that same stitch, bring up a loop, make another single crochet, then chain one. turn your work and then you're going to go into the next stitch over for your second single crochet next stitch over for your third and you're going to keep going all the way across this is my fourth fifth and when you end you should have 18 and then come back. So I finished with exactly 18 stitches. Now I'm going to make one more single crochet 
into that last stitch which will give me a stitch count of 19. So go ahead and chain one, turn your work, and then go into that next stitch and then that's your second single crochet and the next stitch is your third and when you finish this row you should have a count of 19 so I just finished a stitch count of 19 now the fun part about this is you don't have to be exact with their stitch count in fact if you're off a little bit it just gives your dog a unique look because this is just for the decorative part that goes behind the snout so it doesn't have to be perfect so don't worry if you're not getting the exact stitch count that I have so now you're going to make a chain of one and then turn your work and then work into the next stitch over for your second single crochet and you're just going to repeat this one single crochet in every stitch back across and then you're going to chain one again and turn your work and make one more row so both of these rows will have a stitch count of 19 or pretty close like I said you don't have to be exact so you can see how this crochet hook makes it real easy to get into the next stitch to make your single crochet even though you can't see the opening you know that it's there so go ahead finish this row and one more row stitch count of 19 and then come back so now you can see that your the length that you've completed so far is about three inches and you're ready to sew the snout on to this portion the top portion of the snout so go ahead and just leave a little bit of a loop so we can sew the snout on make sure that the loop portion is facing down so the top of the snout will go up here and then the bottom of the snout will go here because this bottom part is going to form a triangle with the pipsqueak yarn when we're finished so now you can go ahead and put some stuffing into the top portion of your snout. So you don't want to overstuff it because you want it to fit into the center of your pipsqueak area. And you want to have that bottom row where the loop is so that you can continue to crochet along the bottom. So make sure you don't um, you leave that bottom row a little bit open as you sew it on. So your snout should fit right directly into the center and you'll line up the top with the very top port part of the pipsqueak yarn and then you're just going to sew it in place. So again make sure that the loop where you're going to continue to crochet with the pipsqueak is in the bottom right corner and then just center your snout and sew it in place with your tapestry needle. So for mine, you can see that I have about three inches, one, two, three boxes, so about three inches on this side, and then I have three inches on the other side, and then the center three inches will be where my snout is sewn on. I'm gonna sew the top portion of the snout first, so you can see how I'm coming up from the wrong side with my tapestry needle and the white colored yarn. And you want to make sure you leave a loose yarn end on the back for tying a knot. And then you just want to make sure that your nose stays straight. So you don't want your nose to be crooked as you're sewing. And I'm sewing right along the edge. So you can see how I'm sewing right along the edge and I'm going to sew all the way around the snout making sure that it's centered as I sew and that the nose is straight. So this is what mine looks like after sewing it in place. So this is the loop where I finished off and I'm going to continue crocheting along the bottom but this is what the snout looks like so far. Then 
you can go ahead and resume where you left off with the pipsqueak portion. So you're going to go ahead and chain one and then single crochet into the same stitch and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across except for the last stitch you're going to make two single crochet into the last stitch. So now I have 21 stitches for that row. Then I'm not going to chain one. I'm just going to turn my work and then you're going to go into the next stitch over for your first single crochet and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch across which should give you a stitch count of 20 for this row. So again I have 20 stitches for that row then I'm not going to chain one I'm just going to turn my work and then make a single crochet into the next stitch over for my first single crochet. Now on this row you're going to skip the last stitch. So the stitch count for this row will be 18. So 18 stitches because I'm not only did I not chain one but I skipped the last stitch. Then when I reach the end I want to turn my work, go into the next stitch over and then the same thing. I'm going to make a single crochet in every stitch across and then skip the last stitch. So I should end up with... So now I'm going to skip that last stitch and I have approximately 15 stitches. So I'm going to turn again and for this next row I'm going to skip that last stitch again and have approximately 13 stitches for this next row. So even if your stitch count isn't exactly like mine, as long as you're skipping that last row, you're starting to form, I mean skipping that last stitch, you can see how you're forming a little triangle towards the bottom. So you just keep turning and then skipping the last stitch and just making one single crochet in every stitch across. So you can see how I formed a triangle design towards the bottom with the soft pipsqueak yarn. And my last row, I have five stitches and I'm going to slip stitch into my last stitch. So I just yarn over and just pull the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch and then you just finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew this bottom portion onto the dog. And you can see how you have your soft furry design behind the snout. So I just wanted to show you the length of it. So here you have one inch for one box, two, three, four, five, six boxes. It's so about six inches in length. Now you're going to get your tapestry needle with the white colored yarn and you're going to take the white port triangles that go behind the eyes and I made it so that the triangles will line up with the end of the pipsqueak yarn. So the pipsqueak yarn will go in front of the triangle and then you're just going to sew it in place. So the other side of the triangle should line up pretty much with the nose and then you're going to sew the other triangle on the exact same way on the opposite side. So you just take your tapestry needle and you go through the bottom of the triangle, the white triangle, and then you just take the pipsqueak portion Make sure that your triangle lines up so if it needs to go over, 
a little bit more then you can put the triangle over a little bit more so that the inner triangle portion lines up with the nose and then you just sew it in place make sure you tie a knot leave enough for tying a knot and then you just go right along the bottom make sure that you're sewing right along the bottom of the triangle and sewing it to the pipsqueak this is what mine looks like after sewing the white triangles to the pipsqueak backing now you're ready to place this on the head now when you get your head make sure that the loop where you left off is towards the back and then just flatten it so that you're working with the front so before we sew down the white portion of the triangle we're going to go ahead and get the brown pieces for the eyes, the eyeliner you're also going to need the eyes that you're using. I'm using my Sun Catcher Craft Eyes, the 15 millimeter blue eyes. Then you want to play with the eyes and make sure that you're happy with how the eyes are positioned before placing your safety eye, safety latch on the back. And I'm pretty happy with how that looks. And the chain portion will be the side on the, each side of the eye and then the wrong side has a little divot on it same thing with the other one you can see the little bit of a divot there I put that on the wrong side and then once you're happy you can place your safety latches onto the back of your eyeliner and this is what it looks like when I'm done so I still have room to sew around with the brown yarn so now you want to make sure that your triangles will line up, the white triangles. Go to your magic circle at the top of the head and count down 12 rows. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And under that 12th row will be the top of the triangle. So make sure that both sides are under the 12th row. then you want to make sure that you have approximately 10 stitches between so you'll be 12 rows down from the top and then approximately 10 stitches between and then you can line up your eyes and you'll sew the eyeliner to the white portion only. So once I have it positioned, I take and the eyeliner, the chain portion, I've pointed about 45 degree angle up. And then I have the long portion that I left for sewing. If you don't have a long portion, then you just get the same colored yarn as the eyeliner and then you could see that I placed mine about a stitch or two from the edge of the triangle and then I'm just going to sew it in place I'm going to sew it all along the edge along the brown portion of the eye and again I'm only sewing it to the white portion of the triangle so this is what my eyes look like so far so now the key is you want to make sure that when you sew the white portion of the triangle down that your eyes will still be equal and not one crooked up too high or too low. So again, it's 12 rows down and then approximately 10 stitches between towards the top of the triangles. Then you just want to take and sew along the edge of the triangle to sew it in place make sure that you don't sew out the back of the head only to the front so you can see how I sewed down one triangle after I positioned it 
and here you can see from the magic circle you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So underneath that 12th row was the tip of the triangle and I just sewed around the edge. Now I can line up my other one and make sure that I have the eyes the way that I want them and that they're not crooked and then sew down the other triangle. The most important part is making sure that the eyes are equal. So once I sewed down one triangle, then I lined up making sure that the pupils and the eyes line up. And then my stitch count between the triangles is about one, two, three, four, approximately five stitches between. And then I'm going to sew down this bottom portion first. making sure that I leave enough of a loose yarn end on the inside. Then I'm just going to make sure that I sew it in place. and then I can tie a knot later. So then I'm just going to finish sewing down the triangle and then I'll line up the top of the triangle and finish sewing all the way around. So now you can see how beautiful it's looking. I just love that carrot color with the soft pipsqueak yarn. But anyway, so here you can see the tops of the triangles, the stitch count between, the eyes are straight. Now we're going to work on the bottom portion of the mouth. But before we put the bottom portion of the mouth, we're going to want to, actually we'll go ahead and put the bottom portion of the mouth first and then sew down the pipsqueak yarn. So go ahead and get the bottom portion of the mouth. This is the inside of the mouth, the black portion. So you want to just take a little bit of stuffing and put that into the center. So you don't want to put too much, just a little bit. You can see how I put just a little bit in mine. Then you're going to take the tongue and you want to bury the loose yarn end on the end of the tongue. So just take and put the loose yarn end onto your tapestry needle and then see which side you want for the top part. So this will be the top part of the tongue. I'm going to turn my tongue over and then just kind of weave the tapestry needle through the back side a couple of times. Then you can take and then just trim the loose yarn end. And then you're going to need the same colored yarn to sew the tongue onto the mouth. So now you can have fun with the tongue. You can place it this way, out the front of the mouth, to the side. For mine, I'm going to have it, and you can have it the length that you want too. So if you want it hanging down a little bit more, you just bring it forward. If you want it just a little bit, you bring it back. So I'm going to leave mine about like this. And then just take that small loose yarn end and bring that in towards the inside of the black portion and then get the same colored yarn and you're just going to sew the back end of the tongue only so just around in a rectangle on the back portion only make sure you tie a knot on the inside with the loose yarn ends make sure that as you sew it that you don't go through the white portion only the black portion then, after you have the tongue sewn on, just tuck all the loose yarn ends into the inside and then place it, center it, on the bottom of the snout. Once you have it lined up, you're going to take the same colored yarn as the snout and you're going to come up through the bottom of the pipsqueak portion only. and then just sew along the bottom of the mouth.
make sure that you tie a knot on the inside and then just sew all along the bottom edge of the mouth. Then after you finish sewing all along the bottom of the snout then make sure it's lined up the way that you want it on the snout and that it's even make sure it's not crooked then you're just going to sew the bottom two rows to the snout So the bottom two rows, just make sure that you've sewn it really well. And make sure you don't go through the top of the snout, only the bottom portion. Just making sure that this bottom edge is secure. And you're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Then you can take and just kind of bury, after you've tied a knot, take your loose yarn end and go through the mouth couple of times and then just cut the loose yarn end and again you're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Then you have your mouth all sewn or the bottom portion of the snout all sewn in place. Now you're ready to line up the pipsqueak yarn. Make sure that your nose and snout are centered on the face and then just take and sew down the pipsqueak portion Make sure that you don't sew the bottom row on the head and then just leave the bottom flap free. So only sew the facial portion of the pipsqueak yarn down. The first part that I sew in place is right above the nose, making sure that the snout is nice and straight. So now, after you finish sewing everything down, we're going to go ahead and turn it so that the fat back faces us. Sorry, that's my coffee in the background. I've got to get started in the morning. So now we're going to start making the decrease rounds at the bottom of the head. So just go right back to the loop that you left. You put your crochet hook through the loop, and I'm using my four millimeter. Oops, crochet hook. I just took out one of the stitches. Let me put it back in. Then go ahead and get your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. And for the first decrease round, which means we're going to decrease the number of stitches in the round on the bottom of the head, we're going to make one single crochet into 10 stitches. So one single crochet into 10 stitches. This is my second. I'll show a couple of them with you and then you can go ahead and continue. That's my third single crochet and my fourth. So go ahead, make ten single crochet, one single crochet in each of the next ten stitches and then come back. Now for the decrease stitch, you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, go ahead and bring up a loop, then go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decreased stitch. And then you just repeat this pattern, one single crochet into ten stitches and then make your decreased stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now when you're working in the round at the bottom of the head, you're leaving the pip squeak yarn hanging loose on the face because this is going to go down and fold down for the rest of the head and the body. So leave that hanging loose as you crochet your decrease round and then that will flap over when you're finished. When you get back to the yarn marker you may have a stitch left over so what you'll do is just remove the yarn marker and then I just finished my tenth stitch of one single crochet so now I'm going to make a decrease stitch and then I'm going to place my yarn marker right where I left off and get ready for my next decrease round. 
For the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into nine stitches and then make your decrease stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. When you get back to the yarn marker, just move it up. And we only have two more decrease rounds that we're going to make. The next decrease round is going to be one single crochet into eight stitches and then make your decrease stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. And then the last one will be one single crochet into seven stitches and then decrease stitch. So two more decrease rounds. So now I'm on my last decrease round. This is what the opening looks like so far for mine. And I'm going to make one single crochet into seven stitches and then make my decrease stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around. I finished my last decrease round and I finished with approximately 47 stitches. Don't worry if you don't have the exact same stitch count as me as long as you're pretty close. And you can see that I still have a pretty good opening at the bottom of the head so I just narrowed it a little bit. Now you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker and we're going to go ahead and make a slip stitch. Just go into the next stitch over, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook and then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull Go ahead and pull quite a bit of yarn out for when we sew it onto the head, I mean the head onto the body. Now we're going to make the pipsqueak sideburn design. This is what the sideburn design looks like on my black Siberian Husky. And you can also see where I kind of put a little bit more of the pipsqueak yarn around the eye, too. So that's an optional thing that you can do. And then I also put a little pipsqueak yarn. I just took my tapestry needle and sewed the little line that goes between the eyes. On some Siberian Huskies, you can see some of them have larger ones, some smaller ones. So, I mean, that's an optional design as well. But right now, I'm going to show you how to make the sideburns for this, uh, the carrot-colored Siberian Husky. So you can go ahead and get your pipsqueak yarn, and then you're just going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. I'm using my 9mm crochet hook. Just put it right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb, and then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch down that knot. Then we're going to make a chain. So I'm going to start with a chain of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you're just going to take your crochet hook and go into the second chain from the hook and you can actually even see it on video, the little opening right there. I have my thumb right over it. But that's where you're going to go with your crochet hook. Go into that center, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. So that should give you a stitch count of six. So that's my second one. Third. Fourth. And again, you don't want to make your stitches too tight. Oh, let me double check. That was one two, three, four, five. So if this happens where you can't see that last stitch, then you just go into the same stitch. And that way I have a stitch count of six. And see with this yarn you can't even really tell, which is nice. Then we're going to chain one. Turn the work, and then you're going to go into the next stitch, 
and then again you're going to have a stitch count of six and we're going to make a total of six rows. So again this is just approximate because this is just the design for the sideburn so if it's a little crooked if you don't have the stitch count that you want it's just going to add to the uniqueness of your dog. So again for mine I made a stitch count of six for six rows one single crochet in each of the six stitches. I'm just going to keep crocheting so you can see how I kind of work with this yarn so it's not as difficult with this larger crochet hook. And then again I'm going to chain one, turn, that's my first stitch, second, third, fourth, fifth, and the sixth. So go ahead, continue until you've completed six rows and then come back. So for mine, this is where I stopped and this is what it looks like. But again, you can make whatever design that you want for your dog. So if you wanted to keep going, or if you wanted to make a little triangle at the top, whatever you want to do, you can do. I'm just trying to make it really simple, or keep it really simple. Then when you're finished, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and make sure you pull enough yarn through to sew this onto your dog. And you're going to need two of these. After you have two of them, you're ready to sew them onto your dog. Now, on my black Siberian Husky, I took my little piece, sideburn piece, and I just sewed it right along the side. So you can do that if you want to, but for mine, on this one, I'm going to change it up a little bit because I want to make a little bit of a design right there. So I'm going to sew the bottom half to that front facial part that we made. And then I'm going to create like a little triangle right here. So you can have fun on the design with your dog and make yours however you want, but that's how I'm going to sew mine. And I'm going to make the exact same thing on the opposite side too. So I'm going to use my tapestry needle to sew it in place with the pipsqueak yarn. So I just lined up the bottom half of the sideburn with the front face. Then I'm just taking my tapestry needle holding my sideburn in place and I'm just sewing along the edge. So I'm going to sew all along the edge and then when you get to the front face part I'm going to come back to show you how I attached it. So now when I got to the edge, the bottom half, I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and I'm just going to go through the front face and then through the sideburn. And I want to connect the two pieces so you don't see the orange underneath. And then I'll finish sewing along the edge and tying a knot on the inside. This is what it looks like when I'm finished putting my sideburn in place. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. And again, I just wanted to show you the difference with my Siberian Husky. So you can see how I just made it straight for his sideburn. So it's, you can have fun with it. So if you need help lining up the opposite side, I went up four, one, two, three, four for the corner. And then just make sure you did the same thing on this side, one, two, three, four, so that they're not crooked. Now I have the sideburn in place. And I love how it looks. It looks good. Now, if you want to, this part is optional, depending on the design that you're using for your Husky. But I'm going to put the little center line 
that I always see a little white fuzz that goes right down the center above the nose. So I just got my pipsqueak yarn onto my tapestry needle and I'm going to come up from the wrong side right above the nose. And for mine, I'm going to center it So I'm coming up right in line with the nose and then just come up with your yarn. Make sure you leave enough on the inside for tying a knot and then you're just going to make small stitches going up the center. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot on the inside then I'm just going to keep bringing the yarn through and I'm just making small stitches for my design. And then don't pull it too tight because you want it to be a little bit of fuzz. And You can see how it creates a nice design. Now you can make another I want it to be a little bit thicker towards the bottom than up here, so I'm going to go right next to it, and I'm going to make one more. And you can go a couple of times if you need to, to get the thickness or the look that you want for your dog. So you can see how it just adds character to your dog. I made it double at the bottom and just a single strand there and some of them have the design go up more so you'll decide what you want your dog to look like and then you can create the design unique for your dog. Now you're ready for the ears. Thank you.